Now, since we have users implementing the recipes, I want to actually have a validator against the unit that they are going to enter. So there are all different ways of writing out unit of measurement. And it also depends on where you are in the world on what is going to be valid here. So what we're going to do is initially just have a list and it's just going to be these right here. And then we will actually expand upon that as we go forward with a third party package that will help us do this in a really big way. So anyways, inside of recipes, we're going to go ahead and do validators.py. And we're going to define our first list. So we'll go ahead and say valid unit measurements or something like that. And it's going to be these items here. And each one should be just an element in the list itself. So just make it into a list. And there you go. So basically, I want to check the value if it's even in this list. Now to do this, I'm going to go ahead and define a function called validate unit or unit of measure and a value, right? So it's just a simple function and we'll say if value not in valid units of measure, then we'll go ahead and raise an exception. Now the exception we wanna raise is from django.core.exceptions. We're gonna import the validation error exception. Now this of course is all very well documented on the actual docs for validators. Um, and no, another reason to bring it up is because there are these documentation here um, and it's just like this. Okay, so what we wanna do here is raise a validation error saying something like, you know, your value is not a valid unit of measure. And that's pretty much it, right? So we can test whether or not we need to send back that value, but for now, we'll just go ahead and test this right here. Very basic. So in our models, we're gonna now bring it in. So from dot validators, we're gonna import that validate unit of measure, put it in with our unit and just add in validators. And this of course is a list of potential validators that we'll use. I'm gonna go ahead and put the comment one lower there. Actually, maybe put it above like that. Okay, so we save that and let's run python manage.py make migrations and then python manage.py migrate. We changed some fields, we made some changes to models, so let's go ahead and ensure that we run make migrations and migrate. Okay, so now I've got the server running, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. Jump into the admin, you can go to any recipe, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change this to ABC, the unit to ABC, we'll hit save and continue. It says correct the error. ABC is not a valid unit of measure. Cool, um, so that's nice, but what if ABC was a valid unit of measure? Or, you know, if you look here, you might say kilograms or kg is a valid unit of measure, right? Um, or you could say something like, uh, I don't know, ounces, well, actually I think ounces is one or should be one, right? At this point, it's just OZ, so I spelled it incorrectly. Now, how do we actually solve this? Now, I could, of course, spend all this time researching all of the potential valid unit measurements that exist in the world, uh, but that's wasted time, and somebody probably already figured this out. In fact, somebody did. It's called Pint. Now, Pint is a really useful Python package to do all sorts of good stuff, and luckily, it works in Python 3.6 and above with no other dependencies. That's awesome. So we're only gonna be using it on a very basic level here. And that is, we are gonna run it in here, basically like this, but it's a little bit different than that. So before I get started, I need to install Pint. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal window here and we'll activate the virtual environment. Of course, if you're on Windows, hopefully by now, you know how to activate the virtual environment. And I'm gonna go ahead and run pip install P-I-N-T, Pint. And since it's installing that, I'm gonna also add it into requirements.txt. Now in the case of Pint, I don't imagine that there's gonna be a major change that causes issues with this, as in I don't need to declare the exact version here. So I'll leave that is, and we'll do a pip freeze here and just verify we've got Pint in there. Okay, cool. So I will go into Pint a lot more in the future. Right now, all I'm doing 
is I want to validate the unit of measure, something very simple to do or seemingly very simple to do. So what I can do inside of pint is I can declare something like ureg equals to pint dot, oops, let's import pint. And then pint dot unit registry. So this is how you're gonna work with pint most of the time is you create an instance of the unit registry. And then from there, we can actually grab what this value would be. Okay, so let me just comment this out for a moment. And we can say a single unit is equal to u reg of that value, whatever that value is, or at least we can try this. Now let's go ahead and try this in the Python shell first. I don't have to go into the Django managed shell, just the Python shell. And we'll go ahead and import pint, and then we'll get the unit registry. And I'll just go ahead and do u reg and ounce. I hit enter, notice it says ounce. Ounce is, OZ, hey, that's pretty cool, right? So we can do pounds. That's not the only way to interact with it. You could do ureg dot pounds. That also will do the same sort of thing, except it doesn't necessarily give you the quantity. But the idea here is we can now use this package to validate if it is a valid unit of measure. So we can also use something like feet, right? So it gives me all sorts of things. So this is, you know, meters. We can do everything that we would need. Now, I think this is a really useful package to learn a lot more about. But for now, we can see that I can actually at least test all these unit measurements against that. And if I try to use one that doesn't exist, I get this error. So this is an error that we actually want to catch. So this is the exception that we are looking for. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and import that exception just like this. And so what's going to happen potentially is this right here will throw an exception depending on that value. So we're going to go ahead and put that into a try block here. And then we will catch that exception with this call right here. And then we'll put this in as E. Okay. And then here I'll now raise my validation error. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways on how I could consider doing this. Uh, but I'm going to use the exception message from this undefined unit error. So I'll just pass that in here. And then finally, if there is any other exceptions, I'm going to go ahead and raise another validation error. In fact, I'll go ahead and just raise this right here. Now, this block should never actually be raised, but we do want to have it just in case. Okay. So now a much better way of doing validation inside of our model. Now, of course, we're not done yet. So let's go back into our model and I'm going to refresh in here and run it again. This time it actually changed, right? So ounce has worked. Now, if I use some gibberish, it's going to tell me that this is not defined in the unit registry. So right off the bat, it's like, okay, well, maybe I actually don't want to name this as the validation, right? So it seemed like it was going to be okay, but it actually was not okay. In other words, using the undefined unit error or the, the pint exception, that message does not tell our end users anything of use. So I'm going to go ahead and just say this message instead. And then down here, I'll go ahead and say the value is invalid, unknown, error, something like that. Okay, and so now I refresh in here again, and now it gives me a little bit more robust of a message. Of course, I could, I could still put single quotes around it. You know, it's kind of up to you on how you want to full on format it, uh, but that is a custom validation.